Hey, what's going on, Dragon Ballers? Welcome back to another episode of the Strategy Series. This time, we're going to talk about uh, how to stop helping your opponent beat you. So, uh, this is something that I've seen a lot, both at the local level and the regional level. Uh, I see people all the time just doing things that they they shouldn't be doing, that they don't need to be doing, and just giving your opponent free advantages, right? And I'm not, I'm mostly not even talking about um in-game things although a few of these things are in-game but a lot of the things are actually outside of the actual gameplay where to get into that so if you're trying to top your first event if you're trying to win your first locals if you're trying to i don't know just if you're trying to meet a goal in this game that you have set for yourself you, you might be doing a couple of these things that are helping your opponent beat you so we're going to talk about these things and hopefully uh, you can recognize these things in your play and maybe you know stop doing them and hopefully stop helping your opponent beat you so before we get into this video guys if you're new to the channel definitely hit the subscribe button Hit that notification bell so you can stay up to date with all the awesome Dragon Ball Super content I post here, just like this video. And if you guys are looking for a Dragon Ball Super community to get in touch with, talk about your decks, get advice, anything like that, ask ruling questions, uh, check out the Discord server in the description below as well. And if you guys are longtime fans of the channel or want to read up on some competitive content, much like this, to improve your game and get that competitive edge, check out the Patreon in the Discord below, uh, in the description below, where you can uh, you know help out the channel and also read some great competitive content. So with that being said, we're gonna get into this into this video. I've got a few things uh, listed over here that I'm gonna talk about that I see a lot of people do, and um, you, and if you do these things, you should stop because you're giving your opponent free advantage and you're helping your opponent beat you, and no one wants to do that, right? So you don't have to show your opponent whether whether or not you're side decking, how many cards you're side decking, or what exactly you are side decking. As as obvious as that might sound to some of you guys, uh, you don't have to you don't have to tell your opponent whether or not you're side decking. Uh, you can kind of take this to an extreme if you want. Like you know, if, if someone asks me if I'm siding, I'll, I'll usually say yes or no. But um, this goes more to the point of the later part of this point. But uh, what you can do, like if you want to be really extreme about being secretive and side decking, and you can do this at like the higher levels of competitive play, you can take your 15 card side deck. You know, between game one and two, or between game two and three, you shuffle the whole 15 card side deck into your deck, right? You can then pick out 15 cards that you don't want in your deck for a game two or game three. So this is a way you can kind of mask how many cards you're sideboarding because if your opponent knows exactly how many cards you're sideboarding, if you tell them or if you leave it straight out on the table, you know, if you if you take 10 cards out of your side deck, put it onto the table face down, and then you remove 10 cards, it's a little bit obvious how many cards you're sideboarding, and you're giving your opponent some free knowledge there. And what that's doing is telling them, wow, okay, this guy's siding in a lot of hate for me. Uh, let me side in the anti-hate, or let me just be careful of what he might be siding in. Let me think of all the possibilities. Maybe there's a really big engine that uh, is typically side decked as hate against a certain deck and you're giving your opponent that advantage now That's a more extreme example um, But you definitely don't have to tell them how many cards are side decking um, There's just no reason for it You don't have to give them that much advantage either and and the other part of this point is uh, you don't have to show your opponent What specifically you're sideboarding and uh, I see I do see this a few times at locals and regionals as well Regional is even more than I would kind of care to see because it just kind of takes away from the integrity of the game in a way like uh, I had a one opponent at a regional who uh, this we were both XO at this point and he showed me the cards he was siding out and he did but he didn't show me the cards he was sideboarding in so when he put the cards that he sideboarded out face up I, I kind of said to him was like uh, you know you don't have to show those right and what his response was actually pretty funny his response was that uh, yeah but that that makes it more interesting and more fun so I, I definitely think he was taking the event more casually than most players I mean I think he was aware that he didn't necessarily have to show what he was siding out because again he didn't show me what he was siding in but you know it just gives your opponent that free knowledge that you don't need to give them especially if you're trying to you know top your first event or win your first locals or, or win an event you know anything like that if, if your goal is to win an event uh, that's something you definitely don't need to be doing and probably shouldn't be doing so we'll, we'll move on to the next point this is something I see all the time and this is something that is again just more free advantage that you don't need to give your opponent so you don't have to tell your opponent who's going first until after side decking and until after both decks are presented to each player so uh, again you don't have to tell your opponent how much you're side decking if you're even side decking you can do the whole thing where you put all the cards into your deck and take 15 cards out and then until that point until you present your deck to your opponent your opponent presents their deck to you neither player or, or the losing player of the previous game does not have to declare who's going first and that's really important because um you know i've had opponents tell me that they're going to go first and a lot of times you can assume but you should leave it to them to assume you shouldn't give them that free information again um an opponent will tell me oh i'll go first you know as soon as game a uh, game one's over and i get that free advantage because some cards are not very good uh, on on the player on the draw right so if i'm on the play 
I might side in more big drops because I'm going to get to you know a higher energy level faster. If I'm on the draw, I might side out those big drops because I'm not going to be able to get to that energy as fast as, as fast. So th that's another uh, example of free information you don't have to give your opponent in order you know to stop helping them beat you. So another instance that I see a lot, and this is something I've personally been working on, is not overreacting. So this means a few things, right? Let's say you're in a crappy situation. Let's say you're at like, you know, your opponent's at two life and you're just missing the one card you need to kill them. Let's say you attack, you attack your leader into a battle card or into the leader, you draw a card and then you don't draw the Chompa or you don't draw the card you need. And you're just like, oh man, what the hell? Like this sucks. And you, you just give them that whole, the, the whole theatric um, kind of performance. That's just information you don't have to give your opponent because let's just say you, you attack your opponent's leader, right? And you're drawing a card. Uh, maybe maybe they're afraid of the Chompa coming on another bigger swinger So maybe they'll take that one life and go down to one and then maybe you can kill them with the other swinger And you know you can bait them essentially into thinking you had the Chompa so that's just one specific example, but uh, yeah, and then like also don't um, Don't let your opponent know when your hand is like super good because again you want to bait them into making bad plays You want to bait them and thinking you have things you don't you want to bait them into you know playing around you want to bait them into play into playing into your control right so don't you want to keep a straight poker face and sometimes people might give off theatrics like bad reactions or good reactions in order to in order to bait the opponent but i'll tell you nine times out of ten that it's pretty obvious when someone does it and um it's it's really hard to get that off in a way that you're, it's not believable to your opponent or that oh sorry that it is believable to your opponent so uh, i think i think the safest bet is just to stay with the poker face don't don't get upset don't get physically upset if you draw a bad card don't get physically excited if you draw a good card you know there's just no reason for it it's just helping your opponent uh the other thing is don't flash your opponent your hand like so i know everyone every single time i upload a gameplay video uh i'm very guilty of this and my opponents usually are too you know we all shuffle our hand we all do the, the card flip you know we can all do it kind of fast we've been playing card games for a long time and we're just shuffling our hand right a lot of people at my locals especially and i see this once in a while at regionals as well uh they'll be shuffling their hand right doing that thing doing the thing thinking tapping on the board doing their thing and they'll just like they'll start shuffling their hand like literally parallel to the table right like literally parallel to the table and i can just see their entire hand and it's just giving me so much free information uh, and that's just another, another thing that you just don't need to be doing, you know, make sure if you can't control flashing your hand You know sit like this with your hand don't shuffle it uh, If you think you're gonna flash if you think you're gonna shuffle and like a card might fly out of your hand uh, Don't do that either Otherwise just sit in your room like I do when I'm in between making videos and waiting for videos to upload like a loser And I just uh, shuffle my hand and just like do it repeatedly because I have a weird tick so um, just a little bit rambling, but yeah, don't give your opponent free information. Don't show them cards, you know, like don't shuffle your hand like like this where you're just giving your opponent all the information that they need. There's no reason for it. Another thing uh, that you're going to want to do is read cards, guys. Uh, this is like, this sounds super elementary, but the thing is like one of the rules that judges kind of give you in the beginning of an event is that it, it's up to the player playing the card as well as the opponent to make sure that procedures are taken correctly and to make sure that card effects resolve correctly. So let's just say, let's just say I play, I don't know, some some like card from my hand. Let's say I play this Vegeta, right? Uh, let's say, I, I don't know if you guys can tell what it is. This is a quick example off the top of my head, but this Vegeta says if your opponent has two battle cards in play, it becomes a one drop. So let's say I play it, right? And I'm, the, and I'm a scumbag, let's just say. I tell my opponent, oh yeah, it's just a one drop 15K beater if you have two dudes on the board. And they're like, okay, cool. And then uh, you know they could have they could have preemptive striked this or cold blood lusted it, and then uh, I let that window pass for cold blood lust, and then I say, oh yeah, my guy has another effect too, sparking three, uh, comes into play and blows up all your two drops or less. And they were like, whoa, you didn't tell me that, and then and they're trying to rule shark you. Oh, you let the window for timing pass. It is you should take it upon yourself to read every single card your opponent is playing or is putting on the board at any given point. So really important for you to read cards it might be faster for your opponent to just tell you what they do but you should always take it upon yourself especially if you're trying to win or top an event you should take it upon yourself to read those cards and make sure you know without a shadow of a doubt what those cards do final point guys don't be afraid to call a judge at an event or even at a locals depending on the situation and don't be afraid to appeal to the head judge so sometimes you know i know some people that play card games are a little bit shyer they're maybe a little bit more socially awkward and trust me i'm the exact same way and you don't want to raise your hand you don't want to call for a judge and um, you know you got to kind of get over that fear, especially if you want to um, if you want to exceed in these events. Because sometimes people are gonna uh, not know how rulings work correctly. Sometimes they're gonna rule shark you. And once in a while, incredibly rarely, but once in a while, you will come across a cheater, right? So you don't want to get caught in any of those kind of rocks and hard places. 
so call a judge. And another thing, guys, I'll give you an example in a second, but don't be afraid to appeal to the head judge if you're not sure about a ruling and if you don't think that the head judge, if the regular judge, uh, the floor judge is going to get it right. You know, floor judges are human. I can't blame any of them for getting a ruling wrong. There's tons and tons of rulings in this game, and some of them are very, very niche, and only a true student of the rules uh, will know it, uh, without a shadow of a doubt how that's going to work out. So, uh, my example, I was playing in Chicago in teams. This is top four. Uh, no, sorry, top eight, and we're going, we're playing to go to top four, and I'm in game three against my opponent, and this is the play that either wins me or loses me the game, so my opponent, on the, my opponent was playing Gogeta Ramp, I was playing Skillless, he, uh, dropped Fu Shrouded on his previous turn, you know, attacked for some damage, whatever, and then it came back to my turn, right, so I can't activate skills for the duration of the turn. Now, I wanted to overrealm, I wanted to play uh, Demigra the Secret Rare by Dark Overrealm. And I wasn't sure if I could do it or not because I wasn't sure if it was an activated skill or if it was just like some type of summoning condition that I can still meet. So I called the judge over. And the judge said, because it's a skill on the card, you can't do it. Now, I wasn't sure about it. My opponent also wasn't sure uh, if this was the correct ruling or not. So I, you know, I made sure it was cool with him. Even though you don't have to make sure it's cool with your opponent. I just kind of did it to be courteous. You, I called the head judge to get, to get the appeal. And the head judge came over and actually rectified that and said, no. Uh, summoning a battle card with Overrealm or Dark Overrealm is not a, an activated skill. It's a summoning condition, so it gets around um, the it gets around the Fu Shrouded. So you can still play it, and it'll still have the triple strike, and that's why I needed to win the game. So all that being said, all that mumbo jumbo being said, uh, that you know it's really important that you take it upon yourself to do to do those things to call those judges, uh, especially when you're not sure of a ruling. So guys, uh, that's pretty much the kind of like the six points I have for. You know, stop helping your opponent beat you. Uh, really important if you're trying to win a locals or top your first event. So, guys, let me know what you think about these rules uh, down in the comments below. Hopefully, these, these are helpful to you. And uh, with that being said, thanks for watching. My name is Joey. This is Crosswell TCG, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Hey, welcome to the end card, and thank you so much for staying through that. Because honestly, I'm just doing this until they make a Digimon trading card game. So, if you like Dragon Ball Super for some reason, give this sub up above. Maybe check out some of our other content. And do not forget, Digimon is way better than Pokemon. With that being said, we will see you next time.